Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, Yellowstone had a couple very small earthquakes today. Um, I found some other information that was rather fascinating about Soda Springs. You'll remember 2017-2018 uh, when they had that earthquake swarm um, down there. Well, yesterday there was a 1.4 and a 1.7 earthquake. There's a location of that 1.4 and the 1.7, 6 kilometers and 1.9 kilometers in depth. That 1.9 would be about 1 mile in depth, and all earthquakes are measured from sea level. But I found some interesting information. The University of Utah, working with the Department of Energy, evidently has been doing some studies down here about using volcanic lava flows, um, those areas as a location to dispose of CO2. I was looking up about the uh, ancient helium that was found to be in the waters coming up from Soda Springs, ancient helium-3, which comes up from the mantle of the Earth, and ancient helium-4, which comes up from the crust of the Earth. Yellowstone has zero monitors to track the volcanic gases that are coming up from the caldera, but yet they got uh, the money given to them to do a very in-depth study about the disposal of CO2. And Soda Springs was the area of this research. Robert Smith, Bob Smith, as we know him of, from the University of Utah, was part of this research. You can see him right there, along with Trent Armstrong. Um, I'm not going to try and pronounce that person's name. Travis McLean. So I was wondering if these tests that we're doing there at Soda Spring had anything to do with the earthquake swarm. I couldn't find any indication that um, CO2 was in fact pumped into Soda Springs, but they concluded that there was pros and cons for the disposal of CO2 into this area. One of the cons was the introduction of injection horizontal fluid or escaping CO2 into the overlying aquifers can result in detectable changes in the hydrochemistry of the shallow aquifer. If the CO2 ended up uh, leaking from where they decided to dispose of it under the ground into the aquifer, I guess people's uh, tap water would start to fizz, right? You know, CO2 injected into water is how you get the fizz for diet sodas. Was it just a coincidence that the earthquakes occurred there? I don't know. They did put in temporary monitors during that earthquake swarm. They also did test to see if uh, the Green River area of Utah would be acceptable for disposal of CO2, carbon dioxide. They spent all this money to do the research, and evidently they're still doing research, about the uh, probability of disposing of CO2 under um, flows of lava, um, basically basalt. But yet USGS can't afford to put in monitors uh, for the gases that are coming up. An example, back in 2004, I believe it was, five different buffaloes were found to have dropped dead in their tracks because of uh, the gases that were coming up. Um, ancient helium-3 and ancient helium-4 and um, CO2, carbon dioxide. There's an article with an interview uh, with Michael Poland on the National Parks Traveler about the lack of monitoring for these gases there at Yellowstone. Uh, these gases could be a precursor, a warning of an increase in activity there at Yellowstone. Michael Poland says there's gases coming out of the entire park, just about. So it's really hard to monitor gases at Yellowstone, he continued. You would have to have continuous stations, which are still kind of a new technological development. Continuous gas monitoring has not been around that long. 
you would need to have them all over the place and it's just not logically viable. It's not financially viable. He says that they are monitoring the earthquakes and ground deformation, but they are not measuring the gases in that way, he says. They don't even know how the earthquake swarms affect the release of the gases. He also knows that it could uh, possibly show the changes of the depth of the magma beneath the surface. And he also says, despite the reputation of Death Gulch, I've covered that area, and the March 2004 incident where five bison died at Norris Junction, Hungerford said the average, average park visitor doesn't need to worry about Yellowstone gases. Um, so what would classify you as not being an average park visitor? Someone that's camping there might be there for, what, more than a week or a day or two? And he also pointed out that more people, more visitors have been killed by falling into the park hydrothermal features than by bears. USGS had a paper about the uh, different gases that come up there at Yellowstone. Um, this one here was about the helium-3 and helium-4. It says here, scientists who work at Yellowstone are interested in finding physical and chemical signals from the deep magnetic system, both to understand the nature of the system and also to monitor for possible changes. Some of that research involved collecting and analyzing of gas and water from thermal areas to look for chemical tracers that can be directly linked to the magma. They have to go out with bottles to collect these samples because they have no monitors that are monitoring the gases 24-7. Now, when El Ural erupted, that's one of the uh, volcanoes in the Canary Islands, erupted back in 2011, they had monitors out there taking all sorts of gas readings 24-7. Uh, that was back in 2011. So for them not to have monitors there at Yellowstone um, is just a, a cop-out, in my opinion, when they got money to do research to see if... Uh, Soda Springs would be a good area to dispose of uh, CO2. Why couldn't they put gas monitors at some of the hot spots, you know, the areas where they have the earthquake swarms there in Yellowstone, or even in the areas where they found the dead bison, the dead buffalo. Today, there at Yellowstone, they had a 0 0.7, which was very shallow, uh, 1.9 kilometers in depth, and then just before that, they had a 1.3 earthquake, which was only two kilometers in depth. I've covered this area before. This is the location of that earthquake. And here's Little West Thumb. Yeah, and what do we got over here? Grant. Yeah, two earthquakes by Grant. Uh, remember several years ago when there was a swarm in this area? And I told you how magma is naturally buoyant, wants to rise up, um, will come through the rock formation, the easiest area that it has to travel through. And now we got two earthquakes here today. But there was more than two earthquakes. Now the line here is off. This bottom monitor is off by about two hours. But you can line up right there. There was one, two, three, four five, six, uh, possibly seven, maybe eight earthquakes during that time frame, but they only reported two. This middle monitor right here is the monitor for Yellowstone Lake. It's a borehole, borehole 208, and this one here is Mary Lake. This here is a monitor for uh, Yellowstone Lake. This one is in red. This is the one at um, 852, right there. But you can see we have another one there, another one there, another one there. Um, let's look at the signature right through here. And then we got another earthquake there. Two small ones there. And then magma on the move. Let's look at this. 
yeah harmonic tremors see how it goes up and down up and down and then earlier let's look at this yeah look at the signature there oh wrong there we go yeah magma was definitely on the move earlier look at that Here we have the tilt meter for Norris Junction. This will tell us if the ground is rising or if it's dropping, subsiding. Um, X is north and Y is east. This is borehole 205. And this is the earthquakes for the last seven days. And then the last 30 days. And they have two monitors there at Norris Junction. This is borehole 950. Top is north. Bottom is east. Last seven days. And then the last 30 days. Yeah, look at the dots outside of the line of the general trend. Yeah, something's going on there. More of an uplift. Here we have the monitor for Norris Junction. Yeah, we got some little stuff going on here. Yeah, two small quakes. That could have been from Stanley, Idaho. Let's go back and look at the signature. And we got another one there. That one was definitely localized. And then uh, the earthquakes that occurred. We got one good signature there from, um, yeah, that would be the uh, magnitude 1.7. That was by um, Grant Village. Let's see. All right, let's just pull it over. Oops, went off the line. And then earlier, that one's not being reported. And let's look at some of this other stuff that might have been happening earlier. Again, this is Norris Junction. Here we have the tilt meter for Grant. Borehole 944. X is north. Y is east. Lots of dots. Means lots of shaking going on. Again, this is for Grant. This is where the recent earthquakes have been going on. And I noticed this yesterday. I was going to make a video, but I was having problems with my microphone. Anyways, yeah, that's a lot of earthquakes for the last seven days. And then the last 30 days. Yeah, look at all those dots. Look at that. The tilt meter for Yellowstone Lake. Top is north, X. Y is east. Last seven days. Yep, look at the trend. And then the last 30 days. And we got a dot way up over here and a dot way over here outside of the trend of the magma. Remember, they're tracking what the magma's doing under the ground. Which direction? X is north, Y is east. But they also are tracking what the ground looks like if you're standing there looking out across the horizon. Madison River, which is just below Norris Junction. Top is north, Y is east, last seven days, yeah, just one thick line, and then the last 30 days, yeah, what's going on? And then this is the monitor for Panther, which is up by the Montana border near Mammoth, Mammoth Hot Springs. Top is north, bottom is east, look at the difference last seven days and then the last 30 days y is east x is north this is what it's doing under the ground all right the next monitor i'm going to show you is mary lake and i'll show you where that's located not far from yellowstone lake right there let me bring this out to give you a better idea there's mary lake
right there and this is Yellowstone Lake. Down here is where the earthquakes have occurred that happened today. All right, they have two marked in red. They got this one, which is the 1.7. Yeah, we got a more of a signature there, don't we? There's another one there. Another one there. Another one there. And another one there. Oops, right there. This one here, they are not reporting. And it's marked in red. When it's marked in red, that means the computer picked it up. And that's for the geologist to come in later and review it. Yeah, we got five, about 518 right there. Not being reported. We got 846. 649 and then 120. So let's go back to the monitor for Yellowstone Lake. Here's that earthquake right there that they're not reporting that was marked in red for Mary Lake. 518 right there. And this is the monitor for Mary Lake. I'll put them side by side for you. So we have here. This one right here is what monitor? Uh, 208. That's Yellowstone Lake. And then this one right here is Mary Lake. Not being reported. And you can kind of, let me pull it down so you can compare the activity here. Let me pull it down a little bit more. There you go. Like I said, Mary Lake is about two hours behind, and I'll show you that over here. I don't know why the data is coming in two hours late, unless maybe they want to censor it. Here you can see 1700, and then the 1700 line all the way up here. And I'll pull this up right there. So we got uh, Norris Junction, Yellowstone Lake, and Mary Lake. Anyways, that's all I have for you right now. If any thoughts or comments or questions, you might want to review my video that I did last time on uh, Yellowstone about some of these ancient um, eruptions, such as the one that had happened at Sunlight Volcano. I mean, look at the magma. This is basalt that flowed out here. Yeah, look at the flow of magma. Anyways, please stay safe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.